Norman Collins was such a huge advocate of sterilization, so he helped to make tattooing a lot healthier and safer. He also developed the first purple ink that was non-toxic and non-fugitive. He invented the magnum needle, which applies broad strokes of color as opposed to just a single needle for outlines. So he's really done a lot for tattooing. My name is Sam Sheasley. I work for the Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So I'm here in London um, celebrating the opening of Hotel Street. And this is the first time that the collection is being uh, exhibited in its entirety. Up until now, uh, some of the flash art has traveled to different venues in the States, but this is the first time that the collection has been displayed in Europe. Regardless of whether you are a fan of tattoos or not, um, coming in to see this exhibition is actually a wonderful way to catch a glimpse of uh, the life story of the man, Norman Collins. There are 192 objects in total, so it's a quite sizable collection. Within the collection of Sailor Jerry artwork or tattoo artwork, it can be broken down into three different categories. Um, there's the flash art, there's the acetate stencils, and then there are the drawings and the rubbings on tracing paper. So the flash art were the designs that were hung on the walls in the tattoo shops and they were the pieces that customers would come in and would refer to when selecting designs that they wanted to have tattooed on them. Old heavy black outlines, he really wanted the blacks to appear black both in the flash as well as on his customers' skins. Um, he used a lot of bright and bold colors in his designs, so a lot of reds, a lot of yellows, a lot of blues. From there, um, the tattoo artist would use these acetate stencils to transfer the designs from the flash sheets onto the customer's body. The imagery that Norman Collins chose to represent in his flash was very eclectic. He had something that would suit the taste of anybody who would walk in the door. And the third type of tracing paper drawing in the collection um, were the crayon rubbings. And these were taken from the acetate stencils and they were a way for tattoo artists to share designs between shops and between artists. Each type of artwork in the collection um, was in a different state or uh, state of degradation. Um, the flash art was in very good condition and that's because Sailor Jerry was really interested in using high quality materials. So this piece of flash um, was the only one to sustain any water damage. It had a noticeable tide line um, along the bottom edge here. You can see a little bit of the remnants of that tide line. Um, so this was the only piece of flash that required any sort of chemical bleaching. The drawings on tracing paper were in the worst condition. By nature, tracing paper is very acidic, it's also a very thin paper, so there were an awful lot of tears, creases, and losses associated with each of the drawings. If you take note along the bottom edge here, there is sort of a disruption in the design here, and you can see a little bit of edge discoloration in the paper. This entire section of the tracing paper had been lost. As acetate ages, it shrinks, it discolors, it becomes incredibly brittle, and we had to work out some new mending and treatment solutions for those pieces, so they were a little bit unusual for us. He was not only a tattoo artist, um, but he was also a musician. He played the saxophone, and he wrote poetry that he read over the radio, and you know, he was this really incredibly well-rounded person, and I think that that's you know, represented in the artwork. So come down to Hotel Street, you'll get to see a um, free exhibition of Norman Collins' artwork, you get to hear some fantastic bands, see some iconic movies, hear uh, some amazing DJs, um, enjoy some great cocktails. You can look for ticket information at facebook.com slash sailorjerryuk.